Great. The first king of the United Kingdom was Saul, and he was replaced by David. David, a man after God's own heart. And God promised David that there would always be one of his descendants on the throne. Solomon was the third king of the United, Na United Kingdom, and he was the son of David. And when he first became king, he had a dream. Out of curiosity, how many people here dream, as far as you know? Okay. Um, how many people have had a dream that came true? All right. Um, recently, I had this dream that I was driving down the road, driving down this street. I don't know what street it was. But as I was driving, there were these policemen in the road with guns shooting. A few days after that, Sandy and I were coming from downtown up Bush Street toward Highway 58, and there were policemen with guns in the street. Not something you always see in Red Wing. Um, and if you look at the newspaper on Wednesday, you'll see that it is true. And not, not that my dream, but that it actually happened. Um, has anybody had a dream where they felt that God was telling them something? Okay. Um, I had this dream, again, um, I won't go into all the gory details, but basically I had this dream that I should make up with this guy that I, I had had an argument with. And God was somehow telling me, not in, not in specific words, but somehow I knew that that's what God wanted me to do. Solomon had a dream. And in the dream, God said to him, ask what I should give you. And unlike us, he didn't ask for like the Powerball numbers. He asked for an understanding mind and, the, uh, and to be able to discern between good and evil. Why did he ask for that? Well, so that he'd have the skills and tools to do the job he had. He had been blessed. God had blessed him to make him king. And when he became king, he realized he didn't know how to do it. And so he asked for the skills to do the job. God put him in that position, and he wanted to do a good job. So Solomon basically prayed that God would equip him to be what God created him to be. That's one of the lessons that we have in our reading for today, that God would give us that we would pray that God would give us the ability to do whatever we were created to do in this place right now. There's a, another lesson that comes from this famous story of Solomon and the two women. Two women were uh, both had infant children. They were both sleeping in, in the same house. And tragically, one rolled over and the baby was killed. One of the mothers said that the babies were switched, that her baby was fine, but the other woman switched it with the dead one. Both women claiming that they were the mother of the living child. So Solomon, in his wisdom, says, get a sword, and let's cut that baby in half. And then they lived happily ever after. No. Um, the woman, probably the true mother, filled with love for the child, said, no, give the child to the other woman. Do not hurt the child. The other mother said, it shall be neither mine nor yours. Divide it. Solomon says, 
Give the child to the first mother. She's the true mother. Isn't this a message that we need to hear in our world today? Take politics, for example. It's all or nothing. It's all about winning, not about the baby. If I can't get what I want, let the baby die. If I can't get what I want, who cares about the country? Who cares about the people? I need to win. My team needs to win. When I first came to First Lutheran, I, was, I felt I was the benefactor of a beautiful renovation that you all did, that you all worked for, that you gave your time and talents and money to. I served another church, and I was also the benefactor of a renovation, a beautiful renovation. And you hear stories about church building projects. Um, not all of them are very nice. Uh, this one was about a lifelong member of that church um, who took a stand. Apparently, when they were building this, when they had the plans to build this, to do this renovation, they needed more space. And so they were going to move one more foot closer to the cemetery. It was one of those churches that, you know, the cemetery is right next to the church. The man said, if they move the church building one more foot closer to that cemetery, I'm leaving. And they did, and he did. Now this guy was a lifelong member of the congregation. He was baptized, went to Sunday school, was confirmed, was married, had his kids baptized at this church. And he left over one foot. The person telling me the story admired the man for standing on principle. Really? Really? You leave your lifelong church where you were baptized and confirmed and married and had your kids baptized and you left for one foot? That's all it took? That's a principle to be admired? Now you know the church is not just a building, it's people. And, and this guy was related to a lot of people in that church. One foot more important than his lifelong church. Now, wearing red today, it's red over here. Um, it's Reformation Day, and we know about standing in, on principle. Martin Luther stood on principle. He didn't want to leave the Roman Catholic Church, um, but he felt that the gospel was at stake. He even tried to reform the church from within. And uh, as he was discerning, um, one of the terms that Luther used for discernment is a term called adiaphora. Uh, adiaphora means something that is uh, not essential. It can be important, but it's non-essential. The gospel is essential. Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins for the sake of the world. That's pretty essential. A lot of other stuff is not essential. It's adiaphora. We need to be able to discern what is truly important, what is truly essential, and what's adiaphora not just in politics, not just in the church, but our day-to-day -day life. There was one study recently that said families are spending less time together since the 2016 presidential election. Families spent less time together at Thanksgiving dinner giving thanks for all their blessings because of politics, because they felt that politics were more important 
than family. We do need to stand up for what we believe in, but we need to remember what's, what's ultimately important. I think love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. I think that's in the end more important. We can't live in a take it or leave it world, all or nothing world, where we don't care about whether the baby dies or not. It's not good for our family, it's not good for our friendship, it's not good for the church, it's not good for the country, it's not good for the world. Let us pray, as Solomon did, for the gifts and abilities and the discernment to live this life where God has placed us to the best of our ability, to the best of our potential. And let us remember that God wants us to ask for help. God loves and cares for us and can help. And he wants you to pray and ask for it. Amen? Amen.